Hi, this video is going to give you an overview of using BigBlueButton from the point of view of a presenter to teach students online. When you first start up BigBlueButton, you'll see a number of windows. The first window you notice in the upper left-hand corner is the Users window. Your name will be shown in blue, and as other users join the session, you'll see them appear in the Users window. One of the first things you can do with users is chat with them. You can chat with all users by just typing into the All tab. And if you wanted to do a private chat, you can click the plus sign at the top, choose the user's name, click on them, and that'll open a private tab between you and that user. This is not visible to anybody else. Whatever you type in here, they will see, and they'll have a chance to respond back as well. If you're in a private chat tab and something happens in the All tab, you can just click on it and you can see what the chat is for the group. In almost all cases, you want to talk to students directly. To join the audio bridge, click the headset icon in the upper left-hand corner. This will start sharing your microphone. You may see this dialog box too when you first enter BigBlueButton if it was set to auto-join. Click Allow to allow Flash to access your microphone and click Remember so you don't have to do it again. You can first test your speakers. You should be wearing a headset and you should hear the audio in your headset. Click Join Audio and at this point you're in the audio bridge. As you talk, the microphone icon should highlight to show that your audio is going into the audio bridge. You have the ability to mute and unmute yourself just by clicking the button at the top. If for some reason there's no audio being transmitted, you can adjust your microphone by leaving the audio bridge, joining it, and then click the test to change microphone. Here you're looking for energy being broadcast from your microphone as a green bar. You can adjust the record volume, and if there's no energy, Choose a different microphone until you see the energy being generated. When you've got one that's working, click Close and then join the audio again. As other users join the audio bridge, you'll see a microphone icon appear next to their name. And when they're talking, the icon will highlight as well. As the moderator, you have the ability to mute and unmute the other users. You can do it by just clicking on their microphone icon. Here, Tara is muted. And if you click on the microphone icon, there, Susan is muted as well. A user who is muted can still unmute themselves, so here Tara is unmuted and is talking as well. There's more controls to handle the audio bridge. In the gear icon, you have the ability to mute all users, and you can also mute everyone except the presenter. Usually it's yourself. One thing about engaging mute all is that when new users come in, they're automatically muted, so they won't disturb your class with any background audio or sound. You also have the ability to lock a user. A locked user cannot unmute themselves. And finally, you can kick a user just by clicking the X next to their name. So in summary, there are three ways you can manage the audio. You can mute and unmute yourself. You can mute and unmute any particular user. And you have global operations that affect all unlocked users. You can unmute all, or you can mute all except the presenter. In most scenarios, when teaching a class remotely, you'll engage mute all to minimize background noise and to ensure that new students come in muted. Next, to share your webcam, Click on the webcam icon in the upper left-hand corner. In most cases, Flash will choose the proper default webcam, but if it doesn't, you can click Change Camera. You can also adjust the resolution that you're broadcasting the webcam, and when you're ready, just click Start Sharing. The webcam will appear in your video doc and in the video doc of all other users as well. And you can stop sharing your webcam at any time just by clicking the webcam icon again. Next, let's upload a presentation to this session. To upload some slides, click the Upload Presentation button. You'll get a dialog box where you can select a file on your hard disk. You can upload any Office document, but for best results, choose a PDF file. Once you have a file chosen, just click Upload. The Big Blue button will process the file and display it inside of the client of all other users. You control, as a presenter, exactly what users see. There's a mouse movement, and they'll see your mouse as well. And to show this, the presenter is on the left-hand side and the viewer is on the right. You can see as you move the mouse around, they see exactly where the pointer is. As you change the slides, the slides update on the remote users as well. And there's some annotation tools on the whiteboard. So let's choose a color white and the pencil, and we're going to start drawing. And again, side by side, you can see that the remote users are exactly in sync. You can jump to a particular slide, and you can also zoom in and out using the mouse wheel. And when the hand tool is active, you can click and drag around the presentation. Again, everything is kept in sync with remote users. If you want to zoom back out quickly, you can click the Fit to Page button in the lower right-hand corner, and it'll take you back out to show the full slide. 
there's more controls to the whiteboard and to show that we'll upload another presentation. To upload a second presentation, again we'll click the upload dialog, select file. And this time we're going to upload a portrait document. So it could be a Word document, but again PDF is the best results. Here the Word document is shown fit to page, but it's kind of hard to read. So to make it easier and to show more, click the fit to width button. Doing that, and then just using the hand tool, will allow you to pan up and down on the presentation. And just like before, you can go next and previous, and you can also zoom in and use the pen tool. This time we'll choose the uh, black color, and you can highlight text as well. Again, all users are kept in sync each time you move back and forth in slide. Next, we're going to upload one more document. A lot of time people wonder, how do I get a whiteboard with Big Blue Button? Well, the easy way is to upload a blank slide. And many times that's if you want to do some annotation or some math or some drawing for users. Um, here we're going to select the pen tool again. I'm using the mouse, but you'll actually find it easier if you use like a tablet and a pen to just control the mouse movements. But here I'm drawing some numbers. And if I want to have more space in the whiteboard, I can just zoom in and continue drawing equations as well. Again, remote users kept in sync, so when you zoom in, their display zooms in as well. So here I've drawn some equations. I'm going to zoom out. There's also a text tool for the whiteboard as well. So let me zoom in, and I'm going to show you by clicking on the text tool. You can click and drag a box, and then inside that box, you can type in whatever text you want. You have the ability to change the color of the text, and you can also change the font size as well. When you're done entering text, just hit enter. And for all the whiteboard operations, if you want to undo any of them, you can just click the undo button on the whiteboard toolbar. You can also, as the moderator, give other users control of the presentation area just by clicking on the icon to the left of their name. So here, I've just made Tara the presenter. So I'm not moving the mouse at this point. Tara is. And when you want to take back presentation control, just click the icon to the left of your name and you now become the presenter. You can also share your desktop in BigBlueButton as well. Click the Share My Desktop icon, and doing so will bring up a window that lets you choose a region of your desktop or full screen. Here we'll click full screen and accept the Java applet that will start sharing the desktop. BigBlueButton will show what your users see in the thumbnail in the lower left hand corner. They'll see the full size, you're just seeing the thumbnail. To show you how it works, we're just going to minimize our desktop, and let's say we're starting to show how to use Microsoft Word. If we switch back to Big Blue Button, you'll see in the preview theme that that's what users see there. You can see it says this is some text, and now it shows your desktop because that's what's currently visible. When you're done sharing your desktop, just click the close button. Next, you have control over the layout in Big Blue Button as well. To give an example, I'm going to share my webcam again. In the lower right hand corner, there's a layout menu. You can choose different preset layouts. Here, this one shows the webcam prominent, this layout shows the presentation prominent. As a moderator, you also have the ability to lock the layout for everybody. This means when you change the layout, it changes on every user's desktop, and they can't change it. So here you could say, give the webcam prominent, or again, give the presentation prominent. If you want to allow users to change their layout, just unlock it again. Finally, there's some controls in the upper right-hand corner. You can change the default language for BigBlueButton using the language menu. You can bring up a dialog for shortcut keys. This is very good for students with visual disabilities who need to navigate through the interface with the keyboard. There's a help button, and finally there's a logout button. That's it. That's an overview of BigBlueButton, an open source web conferencing system for online learning. For more information, go to BigBlueButton.org.